heard all this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord, which we hope we'll do this evening, and said, O Lord, it is thou that didst make the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. By the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, thy servant, did say, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples think of future, future things? The kings of the earth came and made their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For truly in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you did anoint, both Herod, Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel to do whatever thy hand and thy purpose predestined to occur. Now comes what we all hope, believe we pray. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that thy bond servants may speak thy word with all bones. While you do extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders will take place through the name of thy holy servant Jesus. Yes. And when they had prayed, this has been my hope and prayer every time we came together for the feast. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. <coughs> and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Father, we thank you for everybody that's here. It's a joy and privilege for us to see them and to love them as we love them in our hearts. And Father, we are here just at the very eve of Purim. Remember how also then your people survived another attack on them as a nation. After the three days of prayer and fasting, your servant Esther, Mordecai, and all the people, you turned the weapons of evil, the gallow that was meant for Mordecai, of the enemies of your people. And Father, I feel in my spirit that we need that same bow that does not come from our own spirit and our own goodwill. Not even from our pro-Israel prayers, peace for Jerusalem, but that we need you to shake us with the same power and anointing. That you gave on the day of Pentecost. Lord, you have shown it to me in 1978. Gather the people together each year for the Feast of Tabernacles. For I am willing to give the double portion of God's Spirit. That former rain that fell on Pentecost, this time, the former and the latter rain, all the same man, months, not on Pentecost this day. This time. Mm, yes. But during the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I'm thankful we are here with Jurgen mm. and his family. I bless them from my heart. Mm. I bless dear Stan that has stood with me with his family. And dear Ann that has worked and worked and worked mm. and never asked me a pain. Lord, we come now, for we know that Israel is not just blessed by us going through the streets with nice little flags and saying we love you. We need your power to shake them so that people from Haifa and Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and Bathsheba will come. And people who have no more legs shot off in the wars of Israel will see their legs with 
and that you will do what you promised me in 1978 mm -hmm. when I started the Feast of Tabernacles. One day, just as on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. suddenly there will be a mighty rushing of the wind, oh, yeah. even right. as in X3 now as I felt to read this. It will fill this house and later the valley where you told me to go with the miracles and signs mm -hmm. that will make you so know that you have come yes. to us in power. Yes. You know, I was reading I'm amazed at the Lord. He's so different. That we, we, we read it. His ways are not our ways. And his ways are higher than our ways. But then we don't realize how different his ways are. Mm -hmm. I was reading how God used Joshua against the enemies that we see are now awesome surrounding Israel from within and from without. And I've seen, I've said it often too, yeah. when I see the people who love the Lord in Israel, how they're attacked. People hardly able to, to live financially. Marriages that you think, Lord, after all these years, they leave one another. I had men that I loved so much. And one day, said my wife was the real believer, and she was. I said, the devil comes around as a roaring lion, and his enemy is against every one of you. That loves the Lord. If I was on, forgive me, Lord, if I was on the side of the devil, was only one third of the angels, and all the angels that went with him became demons. With all their gifts, I would do what he does. I would say to the top generals, "Get all these people that love the Lord." If I've said it many times, if all of Amsterdam, sick and corrupted, will come to the Lord, it will only say in Amsterdam, but if Jerusalem. This one will come to the Lord. It will save this world. Amen. The devil will go for a thousand years. So the devil is very clever. He said, make sure that everyone that says you and me that has anything to do with moving that nation closer to that moment. will be attacked spiritually in their marriage, in their finances, in their health. And you know what it took for you to come back. For you need to die. And some of you, if you were honest, says, it's unbelievable how wonderful hours we had prayer with you and your husband. We did not dream that he would be snuffed out. But there is something if you want to win, you have to become much more aggressive by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. And most of us are not. We pray about it. But the Lord says, if you withstand the devil, he will flee from you. Not listen to him. Not being impressed by him. That you're now 80,000 shekels in debt because you, you're barred by the devil to go to America, as one of you. So I was amazed how the Lord solves his problems. And I love him. Joshua's fighting against all these drugs. And he won't come. And the Bible says, I said, Lord, Look at some of the leftists don't read this. <laughs> the 
The Bible says, and the Lord threw stones at them. Can you imagine the Lord throwing stones? <laughs> That's what it says. And we all say, this makes our difficult. And we think it's all nice and sweet. No! <laughs> it's really different. <laughs> and then, Joshua, and I want to be a Joshua, I want to be. Jeremiah, I want to be a Mordecai, and I hope you will want to be an Esther. And a curse! Servant of God. Joshua, I love it. This is war. We're not through yet with the enemies. I'm even more tired. And the Bible says, and I said, you know, this is, this shouldn't be in the Bible. You are the Holy One. You do the great. If I would ask you, who does the greatest miracles, you all would say, the Lord God. But God is so big that he doesn't mind somebody getting the glory when he is doing it. <laughs> and Jesus is so, I know he's something. He is so strong that he says, the same works that I did, and greater you will do. And he's not afraid that therefore he loses the limelight. That's my Lord. And that's how you should be. Stop! Son and all. And he did. He did. And then there is this verse that so spoke. There was never a time before or after, so even Jesus had not this answer to prayers. There was never a time, the Bible says, before or after that the Lord God heard the voice of his son, but he heard Joshua. That's for you, Lord. We are going to praise the Lord. In this aggressive way, I felt that the Lord said, when you talk to me, end with Psalm 149. The two-edged swords is in the hands of the believer to bind principalities and powers. I've been praying over these days for Brexit. We had a man come into the Feast of Tabernacles in whose church in London I preached. Dennis Greenwich was prayed and fasted, and I said, Lord, and I said, when I was preparing, the Lord showed me, you must show the spiritual attack on those who walk in the spirit. We are not fighting in flesh, uh, according to flesh and blood, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, the spiritual weapons. But there is a parallel. The way that Donald Trump there was a woman who worked as lions, and I, I feel to shed. And she says, I knew the, the smell of lions. I worked with them. I also knew the smell of blood when they got into it. And I saw a vision or a dream. I smelled in the dream the lions. And I saw them like roaring lions staring into Donald Trump. And then suddenly I was lifted up over the White House and I saw Donald Trump who prays with his vice president sometimes in the morning on his knees in front of his room in his White House. And I saw the angel Gabriel or Michael come and put a robe over him. He says, you are my anointed son. <laughs> and you know, I, I say it is amazing. The people that I feel in my heart are on the right side, even if they may have loved women when they were in the world. It's the same what I say to people, says young Bill, how can you be for the temple? It's the temple of Antichrist. It says, before Jesus came into your life and made your body the temple of the Holy Spirit, there was the man of sin in you. 
So the fact that sometimes the devil wants to come into you before you're used in that same body as a holy instrument of God is an encouragement. Lord, you don't set the way for me because I've sinned in this body. You make it your body. That's the miracle. And that's why I believe we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. And I said, Lord, and you can see it now, on the political scene, that's why I pray, when Dennis Green is heard to sing in the dark, in the valley where the Lord has shown different people all over the world that that double portion of the Holy Spirit will fall. That's why I'm there. Because I want to be there where God wants. Mm. Not just in any building. Mm. And he heard the singing in the valley. Where Sukkot Hillel has prayed many prayers, they've prayed it clean. Wow. And the Lord said, go to that place. When I saw him coming in, Dennis Green, it's a black pastor, was prayed and fasted for Brexit. And it's just what I have written in my book. God has established nation. When there was this Babylonian spirit that you see all over the world now, we want just to be a great mess. And you can be homosexual, you can be free, but everything is okay. And the Lord showed that when that happened in Babylon, he gave people each their language. So who is the author of English, Chinese, and why? The author is the Lord, and the devil hates. He wants to erase nation. And so Lord, I said, Lord, why is he hated so much? Make America. No! Under Obama, eight years, I have tried to tell you, you have a Muslim nation. You're part of this world. And I'm going to be the Secretary General, maybe, of this world. And I will tell you, you're part of this world! God says, no. I created this Remember that woman we loved her, Effie Lachey. It was my favorite American. And she heard the Lord say, I'm leaving America. And then I thought, Lord, Donald Trump is delaying the judgment. Mm -hmm. And the Americans don't even see it. Mm -hmm. And as I was with, and the same will happen to him. And so when this man came in, I immediately said, Dennis, please speak. And he spoke so powerfully, he says, we know in England that God will use England once more before it falls down as a nation. Together with America, as God used England and America to slay the power of Nazism, I prophesy, if they will listen to the Lord, America and Britain maybe one or two other nations, will free Europe from the invasion of Islam. Mm -hmm. And that's the fight. And that's why I said, Lord, let Brexit happen, even without a deal. There is no need for Mrs. May to humble herself in front of the European globalists who don't believe anymore in their own specific nation. I have two questions. When are the nations finally going to turn from enmity to respect Israel? <laughs> because we all want Israel to be changed. So what does the Bible say? When will they be changed? Ezekiel 37 is maybe the strongest 
chapter about restoration, the physical restoration of Israel, and then the Bible says, prophesy to the wind, which we do, also at the Feast of Tabernacles, that what I read to you will happen to all the nations. The wind will blow upon all of Israel. Not on 120 years on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, oh, this is amazing. No preacher preaches this. And the Bible says after this wonderful vision of the bones in the valley coming together and Israel's physical restoration, the Holy Spirit blowing upon the whole nation. And the nations will know that I am God when my sanctuary is in the midst of Jerusalem. I said, Lord, and there was a woman of God. A week ago from she said, the Lord said, that what I have been preaching is totally from me. That there will be not a return of the Lord till there is this temple to He will sign you from this temple. You can read it in Ezekiel 43. He will come through the East Gate, not the Golden Gate, the East Gate and fill the house. And the Lord said to her, a woman of God, where do the believers in me think I'm going to stay when I'm a thousand years on the earth? In the garden to me? Yeah. Or in an apartment that you will open up for him. And it was so simple. Then all the nations, when they see that holy temple, they can make a mistake. You can make a mistake with a synagogue where you can mow down Jews like this fanatic Australian did the New Zealand to Muslims. The nations will know that he is God. Um, and the second, which was also to me amazing, I read even somebody say, Oh, Bogo Markov is coming. It's wonderful that Bogo Markov is coming. The Bible says, I, God speaks, will put a hook in the jaw of Gogo Markov. And slay them. He throws stones. <laughs> and slay them on the mountains of Israel. God is not afraid of Gog and Mark. We shouldn't speak as of that is the problem. The problem of Israel is that in a way Tel Aviv is becoming more and more a homosexual loved city and a mess. And I would say to the Israelis, I come here because I love you as Jews and you want to live as Gentiles. <laughs> so you have something to say. Not for yourself, and it's your opinion. Oh, Mr. Vandover, so you are against homosexuality? I said, no. Oh, no? I said, God says it's an abomination. If you want to talk, talk to him. Don't put me. I only believe my heavenly dad. And what he says, I believe. And I thought it was freedom of religion. How many funny things you Muslims believe that you have to kill Christians when they're infidels. So shut up! Paul and Silas 
were singing unto the Lord. And it was an earthquake. And the whole family was saved. I'm here to say, Lord, we are attacked in these last months as never before, maybe in many ways. Much in death and terror. I say, Lord, I feel more anointed when I'm in Ethiopia and Finland than I've ever had. Probably to his people. That these people that still stand for the Lord and Israel. Get to me every day! Thank you. 